Yo, so I'm going to do a quick video on advanced audio. Uh, we're going to go over three things. The audio filters that are on each audio source. Using an external USB mixer, so I'll show you how to set that up. And then using some wireless lav mics that I found that are really cool, but we'll get to that at the end. So to start off, I'll be quiet for a second. You can hear there's a static going on. So we're going to go into the filter and try to cut out that static. So it's on the low end, and we can see that it's on the low end if we go to the frequency graph. So let's go to the filter. And if we use the notch filter, we can cut out a very specific frequency. So we basically already cut it out. But you can hear that also cutting out my voice a bit. But now the static is back. So you can play with this until it sounds right to you. Now, so that's the filters. Each source will have it, and every situation is going to be very different. Um, what kind of filter you're going to want to use. But see, that's without the filter. That's with the filter. Here, one more time. No filter. Filter. So we'll leave that off for now. So like I was saying, the other thing that we were going to do is use a USB mixer. So on my left here, which I guess that's your right, but you can see the other camera is a USB mixer. I'll show it to you quickly. This might be loud. Sorry. There we go. So over in the corner here, you got a USB mixer. And it runs back there to that little camera adapter there. So let's get you guys back up here. Whoa. So this camera adapter we can plug into the iPad here or into AirMix Remote. Um, if you're doing a live stream directly from the iPad, if you're doing music or something and you're plugging in and using the iOS camera, then I would route it into the iPad. But if you're using live sources, I would try to connect it to AirMix Remote just so you can sync up all the audio and the video. So you won't be able to hear me um, once this is set up. But that's because it's it's all going to be hooked up over here. So let's do this. Turn that on. So once I plug this in, you won't hear me, but I'll play some sounds over there just so you get a sense. Should take a second. That would be using an like audio mixer. So like I was saying, I found a really cool thing um, as a third option. So on online, you can get them very inexpensive, but it's a wireless lab set. That's a lightning connector. So all I have to do is plug this in. I have a wireless lab. It came with two mics and a little kit, kind of like a Bluetooth headphone um, case so it'll charge everything too. Um, so let's plug this in and give it a shot. Sorry, I guess my little light sensor shut off. That's okay. Check one, two. Check one, two. So I don't know if this sounds better or worse. Um, but it's definitely wireless, so you don't have to be right up to the thing. Um, some of the buttons are kind of, you can hear it rattling. What I would do is take some tape, and the buttons that are buttons, like pushing buttons, it also has a little switch on here. I would cover with a bit of tape, and it'll stop it from rattling, and you should still be able to push the button if you haven't, you know, torqued it down. So those are three you know, audio options if you have to use the onboard microphone. 
I gave you a way to kind of clean up the audio. And if you're trying to use an external mixer to do microphones or a full band or whatever you use an external mixer for, you could do that. And then there's these wireless labs. Um, there are higher quality ones. Um, and I'm sure you could edit these to make them a little bit better, like I was saying, even with tape to stop all the rattly bits. Um, but yeah, these, these mics for $25 a set, I mean, it's pretty cool.